August, I think, 3rd, 2012. Pumpkin patch update. Pumpkin patch is doing really well. And this over here is the Connecticut field. They're doing the best of all the plants. And I just kind of, those are Chris's feet. He's out here with me. We're going to help me with a little commentary. Yep. And uh, these are uh, the uh, fragrant melons. All three of them have come up. And I just want to talk about, you know, that we all love Halloween and everything. We're doing this. We're kind of in the Halloween spirit all year round, pretty much. And now that summer is almost over, this is the last month of summer. We're into uh, August now. Uh, it's that two-month stretch where there's no fun holidays. There's nothing in August and Ooh. yeah, and there's nothing in uh, September. And we were cleaning the house, and I found some of the Halloween decorations, and I was looking through them, and I was like, you know, I always hate it when stores put everything out super early, especially when like Christmas is out during Halloween, and they've been getting worse and worse about it. But I feel really in the fall spirit already, and I've been really tempted to get everything out. <laughs> and in a way, Chris was kind of worse, because last year I decorated his room, mm -hmm. and uh, I put up a grim reaper on his wall, and a cat with a skull, and a few other Halloween things, and I bought him a, a green plastic, black and green plastic jack-o'-lantern. And when it was like December, I start taking all the Halloween stuff down, and he wouldn't let me take the Grim Reaper out of his room. <laughs> oh, we became buddies. <laughs> yeah. Or the uh, the cat. Oh, and the, the bats on the wall. Mm. Wasn't allowed to take those down, so they've been up all year. <laughs> and when we were cleaning out some stuff, we found my jack-o'-lantern, my black and green jack-o'-lantern. He yoinked that one, and now it's in his room. <laughs> Permanently displayed. So I let him have that one. I'll buy another one for me this year. Let me. I stole it. <laughs> and we were just thinking about, uh, I came up with the idea, if we had an extra room in the house, we should just have a Halloween room. And that way we don't put the Halloween stuff in the storage and have it out all year. And when Halloween and fall rolls around, it all goes into the rest of the house and that'll be the empty room for, you know, those two months out of the year. And uh, I think that's a, a pretty good idea. But we don't, we don't have an extra room, unfortunately. We'll probably think of something. All right, um, I'm going to show some of the pumpkins in just a little bit. I want to go to the front now and do the, uh, actually show that watermelon I keep talking about. Okay, so here we are in the front, and the Casa Banana is growing. Okay, the uh, stink bugs and squash bugs got to it, but we sprayed uh, the seven concentrate on this, and it's worked amazingly well. This is growing really well. This is the uh, passion vine. I can't believe how big it's gotten from that first update I made. And then I need to weed that, but that's part of one of the, the unknown gourds. These poor things were covered in those gross insects, and I'm just amazed how, how well... Yeah, there's a little female right there. Hope it got pollinated. Yeah, oh. we had genocide on those insects. Yes, we hate those things. And the bluebird moved outside cleaned out the nest box. i put that back together, see if they'll go for a, uh, a fourth clutch. That would be amazing. Okay, we've kind of been weeding in here, but uh, there are watermelons in here. Oh, there it is. That's our first watermelon. Put your hand there, babe, to show how... how... Well, I got big hands, so... Yeah, his hands are bigger than mine. <laughs> so it's just a little thing, but... It's the first time we've ever grown a watermelon, so we're really happy about that. And then the zinnias have bloomed and butterflies have been coming. Although I planted these for hummingbirds. And uh, a gourd there. The poor gourds aren't doing well because they got eaten by bugs. I watch where I step, not step on these, uh, these runners that are coming. It's the only female watermelon I've seen, though. These are supposed to be zinnia envies. They're supposed to be green. Uh, yeah, I'm still behind on putting away 4th of July stuff. <laughs> I'm already thinking about Halloween. So, uh, yeah, I'm gonna head back to the pumpkin patch and Chris is gonna head back inside. I'm gonna say bye to all my friends. They always talk about you, but, you know, they never hear you. Yeah, it's nice to meet all of you, finally. Yeah, shout out to... <laughs> Though, indirectly. Yeah, 
talked to Brandon. We sent him the seeds and uh Oh yeah, Brandon, uh I'm glad we were able to help you out with your pumpkin patch. Just remember uh, who helped you out when the bombs drop, okay? <laughs> and uh <laughs> Few other quick shout outs, uh, Pumpkin Grower 14, Pumpkin, pu pumpkin Patch 1993. You guys have too many pumpkin names, it's confusing. <laughs> and uh, Alix and everybody else that I forgot. You know I, I think about you guys. Okay, so I'm back in the pumpkin patch by myself now. Uh, these haven't come up because they're gourds, and gourds take a lot longer to sprout than pumpkins do. But a little bit of something has come up in each of the new holes. I don't have my map out here, I don't remember what it was. And it's amazing that these, I, I hadn't sprayed them and they were destroyed them as soon as they came up. They've been sprayed now, so nothing's been munching on them, thank goodness. This little one, I think these are wolf pumpkins. I kept that one because it has new, its first true leaf coming in, so I think it'll be alright. I'm sure it'll be, be fine. These guys are really healthy. Um, I'm just going to go through and talk about my, my favorite ones. Well, of course, I love... This is my favorite so far. Three Connecticut fields, all big and bushy. They're doing beautiful. I can see these from the window in my house. Now these are the Hubbard squash, and they have not grown at all. I'm hoping that they're putting out that they're putting out roots, but I don't think so. I don't think these guys are going to do well. I don't know what's wrong with them. It's a shame. I've never had luck with Hubbard squashes. I'd like to grow some. Uh, the Seminole pumpkins are doing really well in that hole. Two of the three have come up. Well, the third one came up, but it hasn't made true leaves yet. And then I'm really surprised that the uh, one too many isn't doing well. And last year they were my best pumpkins, and a new one has come up, but it's going really slowly too. And then those are Seminoles. They're doing pretty good. But this hole of Seminoles isn't doing well. That one's been eaten and it's not growing anymore, so I planted a new seed in there to replace that one. And, uh, oh, these are two of the, uh, of those oil pumpkins, the, uh, cacais. I think, cacai, I think that's how you pronounce them. They're uh, a specialty pumpkin that has hullus seeds, and they're black seeds. That's mostly what they're grown for over in Austria. And it's already vining and making, uh, little tendrils. You can see a tendril right there. And what looks like the start of little flower buds. But those never become anything, but it's cool that it's already producing that. And then, yes, I know you guys wanted me to do this, so I went ahead and I made a new hole in that row. And I planted three different kinds of pumpkins in there. I planted a fragrant melon, another uh, cacai, and a Connecticut field, because the Connecticut fields are just doing very, very well. A final pan. It's later in the day, so the sun's already nearly covered this whole thing. Ah, and wanted to mention that as well. Uh, for a lot of plants, you know, sunlight is the most important thing. And pumpkins are full sun plants. And I've seen not just one person, but a few people that have had their pumpkins growing under trees or in the shade. And it just doesn't work. They need a minimum of eight hours a day. More if is better of course. They need to be out in a field with no trees around and just the way it looks here, blaring sun on all of them. Uh, and that's that's what they love. I think of all things sunlight is the most important. Last year I grew some as an experiment under the oak tree and under the loquat tree and they did they came up they were spindly the leaves were really far apart even when they vine they weren't bushy. I'm not gonna explain that you guys that have grown the bigger pumpkins know that a vine can still be bushy and you wouldn't know it's a vine because there's just leaves everywhere. So definitely sunlight, number one key ingredient. Second to that is soil and everything else that you just kind of can't control then you hope that your the state that you live in has good weather. You know and do your best. Pumpkins, like I said before, pumpkins are not easy. All right. Well, again, yeah, anticipating Halloween. I can't wait, I can't wait. We went on a date the other day, and he, Chris took me to Michael's, and I can't believe they already have Halloween stuff out. But for once, instead of getting annoyed, I got excited because I want to buy nice things for the house and decorate 
I've got a lot of things that I've saved up over the last three years. I bought some clearance stuff last year that I'm going to use for the first time this year. But I want to get some of the, the new, like, glitter gourds that are out, and some of the spooky gourds. And I think it'll just be nice. Alrighty then. Happy Halloween, Garden! Des, signing off.